welcome to the Cemetery Gates podcast featuring Xander Kane in Android Virus. Perlman almost looks like a retarded version of him. <laughs> oh, Pearl mutations. Or a special needs version, shall I say, to be politically correct. I'm sorry. Oh. Um, yeah. Well, well, hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Cemetery Gates podcast. I am the Android Virus, the Aaron. Joined by my illustrious co-host, Mr. Xander Kane. How you doing, sir? Doing wonderful. Good evening to everyone listening. Good evening. And you, I guess. I guess we'll take we'll we'll take it. We'll take it. Um, yeah, man. Uh, it's been a while. I don't know. It's been a while. Yeah, it's yeah. been almost a month. Th- over a month, I think. Just about a month, maybe. Yeah. I think we're right on the mark of the month. Yeah. Um. So yeah, man, it's uh, it's been a month. We picked some really fun movies tonight, but we do got we do got to get into right into it, right the fuck into it of what we've been watching. And I know we both watched a movie, uh, and we went to go show our support in the big theater. Um, I went with the Android Vision crew, which was amazing. Oh, yeah. So I went with Alyssa. I don't know if you know Alyssa. I know who she is. Yeah, yeah, Alyssa and Sh- and Shred Geen. Um, and who else did I go? My wife, and then uh, Alyssa's chick, or no, uh, Shred's girl, and then Andy or Patrick Peck online. That's Alyssa's man, and the twins. We went to go see the Evil Dead man, uh, uh, Rise. So, hell yeah! And what did you think of it? I fucking loved it. I thought it was a home run. Uh, I prefer the world of the 2013 remake and this one to the original three. Um, And this one, I like that they did have some... Like, they didn't overdo the slapsticky shit. They did it... I felt like they did it kind of just right. Like, you kind of got it, but it never became corny. The movie just stayed kind of intense and in your face the whole time, and I really uh, loved that. I loved all the blood. I thought uh, the scene with Mommy in the elevator was fucking awesome. Uh, yeah, just uh, there's so many good moments, and it didn't uh, did not feel the movie flew by in the theater. It was absolutely awesome. I loved it. So no complaints yeah. for me. None. It was good. Um, little homages to the original, um, as far as the eyeball stuff. Um, I I really enjoyed the the triple headed deadite at the end, which was amazing. Um, but. Um, it was bloody, and it's what I what I what I expected out of an Evil Dead film. You know yeah. what I wanted. It wasn't it wasn't tamed down. You know, no. and they they killed teenagers in it, which was oh pretty, yeah, which is awesome. Tabular. I mean, like young teenagers, not like eighteen <laughs> year olds, like thirteen year olds. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty taboo. Yeah, and I uh, loved it. Those yeah. kids were great in that. By the way, I thought they did a great job in those roles. So all of them, all mm. of them, even the little, the little 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 one, and and the the mommy. The chick, she's uh, the she's a model, but she was in um, Bar- was it uh, Vikings? The TV show? Yeah. Oh, she was in Vikings. She played um, who the fuck? Yeah, she she had a huge role in that TV show. Yeah, I don't think I ever watched. I think I may have watched an episode or two when it first came out, but then I never went back to it for whatever reasons. Yeah, Alyssa Sutherland. That's who she is. She's got a very peculiar look to her. Um, no relation to the other Sutherland actors? No, she's from Australia, so. unless yeah, I didn't think so. Donald Sutherland went and planted some seeds in Australia along hey. his head. But Maybe you know. his body was snatched and taken to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, yeah, she's a, she's a, she's a model, man. Um, yeah, obviously you can kind of tell she's got those model 
Yeah. Bones. And I would I would uh, encourage anyone that has seen Evil Dead Rise to actually go watch uh, Lee Cronin, I think is his name. Uh, mm-hmm. The movie he directed before this that I absolutely loved was uh, The Hole in the Ground. It's an Irish, like, kind of – very. it's a very different film from – Evil Dead Rise, and when he was interviewed about it, I can't remember if it, for what, and I don't think it was Fangoria, I think it was another magazine, and the person interviewing asked him, like, there's, you know, there's stark differences between Evil Dead Rise and The Hole in the Ground, and he was like, what was, uh, what would you tell somebody, um, you know, your style of filmmaking, what was the thought process kind of between the two, and he was like, The Hole in the Ground is the whisper on the back of your neck that makes your uh, hair stand up, and Evil Dead Rise is a full-on assault to your senses, and it's coming for you. <laughs> he's like, so they're two very different films. But it does show, like, if you watch The Hole in the Ground, you can see he, the guy's got great talent uh, behind the camera. So he knows what he's doing. Very glad Evil Dead Rise was a big success. And I'm hoping more people go back and watch Hole in the Ground, and we'll, and hopefully we'll see what he does next. So, Yeah, totally. Good totally. shit. I, I agree. Um, good movie. I mean, obviously, like you said, I... I, I really like that that um, universe of the the new Evil Dead. I mean, twenty the twenty thirteen one. It's one of my fa- twenty thirteen has one of my favorite scenes in the in that I ever got to be in the theater for, and of course that's the the raining blood scene. <laughs> oh yeah, it was just fucking incredible because theater went nuts, and there actually had people clapping and standing up at the end of Evil Dead Rise. So I would have like a opening day friday at like two o'clock and there was probably 30 plus people in that theater it was pretty packed yeah we went at um shit five five ten in the afternoon i don't know why i remember that because i'm a fucking savant but um <laughs> yeah we we went um we went at five ten in the afternoon and it was great man um the original one me and rachel me and my wife remember we went saw friday as well there's actually I actually have a YouTube clip, one of the very first YouTube videos I uploaded t- ten years ago of me and my wife talking about the Evil Dead, sitting in front of a, a Mexican tech, Mexican tire shop, uh, while we were getting our tire changed because we get we hit a screw on the way out, out of the movie, so we're sitting in front of the movie just filming, just just talking about evil, the new Evil Dead. Um, yeah, I love the universe. I mean, again, the other ones are dated, they're slapsticky, they're comedy ish, and these ones are a little bit more straightforward. So. Enjoyed the shit out of it. Thought oh, yeah. it was great. So um, good stuff. Yeah, I've been watching um, again. Uh, you know, uh, Yellow Jackets. I don't know if you saw that much. Uh, that. We we did, we almost started it last night, the second season, but we didn't for whatever reason. So but there's we're ready. Ep- I'm ready for it. So there's an episode my wife tapped out on. Oh yeah. Uh huh. All right. And, Duly um, noted. And uh, I'm like, what's the problem? <laughs> 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 what's the problem? Um, so there, there was, there's that for you. Something to you to get look forward to. But she kind of right. tapped. She's like, ah, I don't want to go back to this for a while. I said, what okay, episode I, number was that? Just so I know. I want to say two or three. Okay. Probably two. I think in okay. two. Well, you go back and look later and let me know. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, it's a I can it's prep a good my one for it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There's that. Um, but yeah, I've been, we, I've, I've just been prepping for uh, the next batch of Android Vision, and um, I got some really good news, some really big news concerning Android Vision. I'm gonna Ooh. tell you off, off the air. Ooh, big, okay. big news. Big news. It's next level. Awesome. And I don't, I don't quite know how to feel about it, but I'll, I'll talk to you about it. We'll off figure the it air. out. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, guys. So we watched uh, a couple of movies let tonight. Me, uh, let me. I want to talk, bring up one movie that I watched because oh, I absolutely please, loved it. Please do. Uh, it just dropped on Shutter. It's been out a while, but I just kind of forgot about it until it popped on Shutter. Called Husera the Bone Woman. Uh, very, very good film about a lady who is. Um, her and her husband is trying to become pregnant, and she winds up getting kind of cursed by an entity, and something keeps following her. And just kind of crazy shit happens. There's lots of really, really creepy moments, great little effects. Um, It it just kind of, honestly, there's a lot of scenes with a lot of really great tension. Just kind of a good, creepy fucking film that I absolutely loved. So highly recommended. So check that out on Shudder. And that's all I got to say about that. So 
Oh. Now we can move on. I just didn't <laughs> want to forget about Hosera. I've watched a ton of other stuff, but really I've been like in a slump of hot garbage lately. Oh. So the only other thing worth talking about was Slaughterhouse Rock, which was good fun. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, there's just a great silly. There's a great silly montage in it that I loved. Uh, if you're not familiar with Slaughterhouse Rock, it's about ugh, the story is kind of all over the place. But it's about somebody visiting Alcatraz mm-hmm. um, after they've had a bunch of nightmares, and you know, then he winds up getting possessed by an evil, I guess, a cannibal demon, <laughs> yeah. and the ghost of a heavy metal, uh, ghost of a female heavy metal singer that was killed there tries to come out and fight the monster and it's all weird and all over the place, but it's uh eighties goodness uh, in all the right cheesy ways. So there check you that out. It. I think it's on Tubi. Um, but, what? Yeah. Uh, Tubi's our friend. <laughs> Always. I think both of these movies we're talking about on the show are from Tubi. They are. Hey, I want to give a shout out to uh, um, follow them on in the Instagram. Um, a B Q comics. Um, just uh, where I work, I'm not going to say I work. I, I met this gentleman. Uh, he stopped me because I was wearing a creep show shirt. And then the next day I was wearing a, a black Sunday shirt. And then I think I was wearing a prophecy shirt that the next day and stuff <laughs> like that. Right. Um, and he's like, Hey man, he's, I'm really into horror. I'm like, Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like a lot of people, yeah. I love horror, horror, horror movies are my favorite. Then he started spouting out like, um, artists and and people that he likes and follows that do artwork and movies, you know, spouting out. Um, you, you know, what, what are some of the movies that we watch? Not a lot of the movies that we watch in the show, but like you know, you know the guys into horror, right? Right. You know, he 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 was talking about uh, Slumber Party Massacre and you know, different things that he's watched and the wraith. And I'm like, Oh, okay. So I go to his Instagram. He's like, follow me on my Instagram. This motherfucker has graded comic books. Right. And again, you got to go to ABQ comics. He has a, he has an eBay store, but you're talking like graded, you know, sealed. And you're talking like werewolf by night, you know, um, crypt of horror, you know, Ooh, like nice. unseen, the unseen, like, just so many old school vault of horror, um, you know, the haunt of fear, like all these old vintage noir horror comics. And you can go buy one for, I don't know, a thousand bucks or whatever. <laughs> That's how good they are. Like, yeah, yeah. T- t- he's got like, he's got like original tales from the crypt, uh, that inspire like, you know, Dawn of the Dead stuff, like just really cool shit. So anyways, go check this guy out. Nice. Just a little shot. Yeah, so um, I don't know. Let's flip a coin. Who do we want to talk about first? I don't know. You don't know yet? I mean, I don't know. I'll go first. That's fine. All right. So let's go ahead and uh, listen to the trailer for 1989's Psychological. I'm going to make a request that uh, we play the trailer and then record your voice saying rainbow just before it says hit you in the dark. Rainbow? <laughs> like Rainbow in the Dark for T.O.? Oh. <laughs> rainbow in the Dark! Like that? Like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyways. All right. So uh, here we go with Rainbow, Hitcher in the Dark. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> uh, here's the trailer of uh, Rainbow, I mean, Hitcher in the Dark. <laughs> hey, you want to ride? Yeah, can you take me to the first bus station? Sure. You can't see me here! Stop it! Stop it! Let me go! Let me go! Bastard! Don't move or I'll kill you! Throw me the key to the camper. Quick! I said move! What 
did he look like? He was about 20, I guess. He had on those mirrored sunglasses. About your little friend, huh? Why are you torturing him? He had nothing to do with this. Oh, that's it, isn't it, you little whore? You're afraid he won't be able to fuck you again, right? Leave her alone! You little pig. Let me show you what happens to a bastard like him. No, please don't. Kiss me. guys that was the trailer for hitcher in the dark it's uh your pick it's it name. is how do we say it in italian uh i don't know, I don't know. Did I look? Nel buio. there you go paura paura oh, maybe i'm rolling my r's too much for yeah that's your I'm, uh my spam turkian paura 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 buio. i don't know maybe go i don't know but there you have it Anyways, this is your pick. That it is. Yes, this is, uh, as I previously stated, uh, Hitcher in the Dark, directed by Italian sleaze maestro Umberto Lindsay. If you're not familiar with Umberto Lindsay, he did stuff like Ghost House, Cannibal Ferox, and, I don't know, a bajillion other things, Primal Eating Rage. Eating Alive. Yeah, Nightmare Beach, all sorts of stuff, all sorts of... Uh, quality films all over the place to be honest some of them are great <laughs> you're always in for something interesting with a Lindsay film let's just put it that way right mm-hmm. you know some are good some are bad um the only real star of note in this is josie Bissett, who plays our lead who you may recognize from melrose place if you ever watched that old ass show uh, I she did. Was, she was Jane on Melrose Place. Uh, oh, so. yeah. Yeah, I totally forgot that. I was like, man, she looks really familiar. And I had to go and I was like, oh, okay, it is her. A really young her. I, don't, I think she actually is less than 20 in this particular movie. Uh, but the movie is about a this rich kid. Uh, his dad is super wealthy, and for some reason he decides to drive around in a fucking RV and picking up hitchhikers and shit. So the first time he picks up a hitchhiker, he picks up this girl, um, and he's super weird, like very obviously socially awkward, and he's wearing like the aviator sunglasses, and I can't remember exactly what the hitchhiker says. Oh, he, she says, oh, every I've been out there for an hour, and every jerk that's passed by has, you know, not picked me up. My thumb is sore, and he like hammers the brakes in her head. Like, oh, yeah, boom. Smashes the dashboard. And so what'd you do that for? You know, he's, like he's like, you called me an asshole. And you're like, uh oh, <laughs> boy, did I get in the wrong RV, right? Uh, and then he immediately like cuts her up, uh, slits her throat, and takes pictures of her with like a Polaroid camera. Well, she was easy. Yeah, those are the first kill. And then he winds up going to a bar in some city, and there's a, a couple that's, or there's a guy making out with a girl whose girlfriend approaches, who is played by Josie Bissett. And they get in a fight, and she winds up, like, slapping the shit out of her boyfriend and taking off. And the hitcher, who his name is Mark, uh, he comes in contact with her, and he, she winds up riding along with him and to take her to wherever she needs to to get away from, from her boyfriend. Her boyfriend uh, does eventually try to, like, find her. He gets in his car trying to chase his RV, and there's, like, a... Uh, "Quote unquote tense scene where her boyfriend's pulling up behind the RV, but he doesn't know she's in the RV, and the RV just kind of waves, or Mark waves off, Mark waves the Jeep off while they're in the RV, and she was about to get out of the RV before the boyfriend pulled up because she could kind of get the vibe that something wasn't uh, right. 
And the rest of the movie is really just kind of the dialogue interactions between the two where Mark kind of tries to befriend her and he tries to, to sleep with her and her, you find out he's, obs- he has a picture in his RV and it's of Daniletska, which is his mother. Yeah. Uh, who she kind of looks like. And, but she, he doesn't tell her at first it's his mother. He's like, Oh, I love her saying all this weird shit about her, but you do find out his mother. So he's like, has, there's some sort of, um, I can't remember the psychological word for it, but where like a, a son has like sexual feelings toward their mother. It's an Oedipus complex. An Oedipus complex. There you go. Yeah. Uh, so obviously this guy suffers from that. And, you know, they're just kind of cruising around trying to escape. He ties her up and eventually cuts her hair to look like his mother's hair. And they eventually have like where she's trying to, you know, kind of sweet talk him a little bit, trying to befriend him because she kind of realizes this is she's going to have to like really play her cards differently to get out of the situation. OK, because clearly Mark is is not all there. So he keeps her like handcuffed to the bed and all that stuff. And then she tries to befriend him. He drugs her one night and takes pictures of her, but he doesn't kill her. So he's like the relationship is like growing She's a good. She's a. She's his favorite so far. Yeah, that's, so that's why, why she stays alive. Right, and now that he's cut her hair, she looks more like his mother. So he's like kind of warming up to her a little bit, and you know, like it's just like a constant back and forth with a whole lot of dialogue, and some of it actually is kind of interesting and does kind of work on on some levels, and some of it's just kind of like, all right, let's move on a little bit, right? And then the boyfriend eventually catches back up. And he, oh, I'm sorry. Let me go back one second. There is a scene where Mark leaves the RV and she's left there alone and he parks it out in the woods. And this guy on a motorcycle comes through and breaks into the RV and steals the purse because her purse is like up by the window and takes off. And he goes in town trying to sell this like bag or whatever to people. And her boyfriend happens to come into the little town and the dude tries to sell him her bag. And of course they have like a little a little tiff. He's like, I'm not, I didn't steal it. That's mine. And he was like, all right, I'll give you a fucking $50 to show me where you stole it from. And you can get on your way. So the boyfriend goes with, with the guy that stole the bag. They, and he finds her tied up. And of course he gets her untied and Mark comes back. And then now Mark miraculously has both of them in the RV tied up. And this is part of the film where you really starts to get a little more sinister and like sleazy because Now Mark wants to play kind of mental games with her by, like, torturing him. Right. To the the point where he pulls a gun off the wall and, like, goes to shoot her boyfriend, or I guess ex-boyfriend. I don't know. I guess they technically broke up when she stormed off. But she's like, I love you. I love you, too. And so she freaks out, but the bullet was empty or whatever, or it was a blank or whatever, so nothing really, really happened. And there's another scene where Mark starts like engraving in his chest and there's like two points where you think the boyfriend's dead and it's just a back and forth, you know, them trying to fight. And eventually, lo and behold, she gets away and you have a very anticlimactic ending mm-hmm. um, that just kind of, yeah, I mean, I didn't care for the ending all that much, uh, but I did appreciate like the kind of the back and forth was actually pretty good. I thought this film was better than I thought it was going to be. And you know, Lindsay was, they lent Umberto Lindsay described it as, uh, his giallo take on an American slasher. Right. And I do think it actually, at times, I think it actually is a hundred percent accurate. And then other times, not so much. Um, so it's, it's kind of a mixed bag. Uh, but all in all, I pretty, I enjoyed it though. I like Josie Bissett. I thought Mark did a great job of being this kind of sadistic, creepy fuck. Um, yeah, it was, uh, like you said, like he, he, it was like an, a, a, a giallo sleazy Italian director coming to the United States filming, a movie in America that what he thinks Americans are like. That's the only thing I can think of. Yeah. So if it feels foreign, it it is. You know what I mean? For all intents and purposes, right. the act, the actors are all American. And I I don't know. If... <laughs> so this would be a great double feature with uh, Night Killer, by the way, in my opinion. I agree. Uh, yeah. 
it's very sadistic. The guy is very sadistic, you know, rapist guy. It gets to it super quick. He's killing that chick fucking five minutes into the movie. So there's no the giallo or slasher. There's no black glove killer. We know who the fuck killer is right away. Yeah, there's no uh, hiding. Yeah, there's no hiding it. And obviously, yeah, he has an obsession with this chick. Let's talk about the characters. I mean, there's some weird like motorcycle guys and some real funny one liners. He's mm-hmm. like, I don't know. I just took a hit of acid. I, I I can't tell you if I saw the right person. You know, and the, yeah, the, yeah, you're riding. These motorcycle, these shitty fucking motocross bikes, these nerdy bikers that listen to rat, <laughs> probably. Yeah, and they're watching that weird fucking movie with. Um, aren't they watching? In their scene where they're watching like this weird ass movie where a bunch of yeah, like apes weird Italian or some shit. It's uh, so weird. A, like a caveman Italian film. Yeah, like, from it's the so 60s. weird. Yeah, it's well, just they're so... all like laughing their asses off watching it. I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah, it's out there. Like it has just really strange moments in it, just like that. Um, it, it's uh, it's sadistic. Don't get me wrong. The guy's a fucking sadistic killer, and he really fucks with this chick a lot. Cuts her hair off, like you said, to have her look like his mom that ran away with the tennis pro. Yeah, but she really looked like when he when he cut her hair, she looked like a little boy. So it got even fucking weirder. Right to right. me, like that was a whole other level of oh, oh like. Oh, and I'm oh, surprised oh. she got nude for this movie, which she did. Okay, uh, I, don't, I think it was like only her second or third thing. It wasn't. Um, it was early in her career because I don't ever remember her doing that in anything else. It's definitely a road thriller, right? But like, for like you know, when you take the road thrillers, and there's there's a lot of road thrillers that we've seen um, on this yeah. show, but you know, you got like. Um, it's a road thriller, but not in the. It's all in the name, Hitcher in the Dark, right? But, yeah. um, it's yeah. actually her first film. Oh, interesting. It is it's her first. And then she was on Doogie Howser, uh, Quantum Leap, Parker Lewis Can't Lose. She's on a ton of TV. Anyways. Do you remember? Do you remember the black dude in this movie that he got in a fight with the boyfriend when he was in the? He was looking for her, and he thought he saw a, a trailer. Oh, when he was in a different um, RV Tra- that looked like RV. that one? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, that yeah. black dude that was kidding, he's like, you motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. like, he was so overacting. So that's yeah. the same cop from Night Killer. Oh, is it? <laughs> the one he's all, son of a bitch. You know, like he just overacts everything. Motherfucker. You know, like it's the same dude. That's just so that's fucking great. funny. Um, yeah, it's a really weird anticlimactic ending. Like, because like. And Berto Lindsay has stated that he was disappointed in the ending of that film. Yeah, so, it's just strange. Which is not surprising. It just kind of ends, and you're like, huh? Yeah, it's just <laughs> strange because, like, he goes back on the road for his hunt, like, after he goes and checks in with his dad, you know, and he's a rich kid. And then he goes, oh, I'm going to go back on the road. And he's, and then he picks up a hitchhiker, and, and then she goes, it's her, right? It's the chick. And she's just like, you thought you killed me. Well, guess what, buddy? Now you're the one that's dead. That's pretty much how it goes, right? Yeah, it's like, okay. <laughs> and then sh- sh- shot, 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 and it's just his face with this, with the still fucking film footage, like in three different points of agony, and then the movie ends. Like there's no yeah. blood. There's no nothing. It's weird. I was wanting something like the end of uh... – did you ever see Hunter Hunter? No. Oh. Fuck, can you see that? Uh, the ending of that movie was more so what I was hoping for for this one. I was, I was hoping more for the ending of the New York Ripper. <laughs> yeah? He just gets his fucking face blown off, you know? Um, but, hey, you know. Can't win yeah, them all. Can't win them all. It's a strange film. Um, it's really, like I said, like 80s Italian corny. Not that great of acting. But an interesting enough film, if you're into that. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. Uh, what'd you give it, sir? Uh, I actually I actually gave it a three out of five for whatever weird reasons. I did enjoy it uh, quite a bit. Oh, well, there you go. You did enjoy it. Yeah, I, I would I would suffice to say a three out of five would work. Because I, I think it's um, a, above average in a lot of ways, but I still enjoyed it. I enjoyed the ride. If the ending was better, I'd probably give it. I, I want it's barely a three. I'll put it that way. Just barely a three. Bur- burly, burly. Yeah. I, Sorry I, about I, the barking dog, by the way. If you heard that. Oh, I heard it all right, but that's okay. <laughs> I don't mind it. It don't bother me none. 
does not bother me none whatsoever. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I quite I quite enjoyed it. I mean, like again, three out of five. It's not nothing like too crazy to write home about. It's pretty corny. The acting's not that good. But again, it's a foreign film filmed in America. If that makes any sense. Yeah, most of it was filmed in uh, Virginia, like near Virginia Beach, Virginia, and then like mm-hmm. they kind of cruise down that coast at east coast a little bit so yeah not bad man so nah. three out of five check it out guys yeah, it's on tubi watch it for sure hit you in the dark all right like guys. a rainbow like a rainbow in the dark um all right play that on our outro <laughs> yeah hopefully we won't get pulled from <laughs> <laughs> i know right like we're trying to make money off of it come on now come on uh, kids Come on. We're um, only here for the nookie. I know. That's it. So take that cookie. <laughs> Stick it up. Eh. All right. Um, all right, guys. So my pick, um, and we'll get a little bit more into this, but let's go ahead and listen to the trailer for, uh, I, I don't know. The Night. First Power. Yes. It, what, what year did it come out? 1990. Wow. Right Neo on noir the war horror. There you go. 1990 is the first power. We'll be right back. Since the beginning of time, Satan has worked to create the perfect killer. One who kills many without reason. One who cannot be stopped. Today, that man exists. Be warned. We're just going to go through a very small door here. Lou Diamond Phillips is hunting a man who kills for the sake of killing. Tracy Griffith might be the only one who can help stop him. I know where he's going next. What? Oh. But this location fits the pentagram pattern on the map, and my informant says this is where he's going to strike next. This is the third time in less than five years that Logan has been responsible for the death or capture of a serial killer. See you around, buddy boy. I doubt it. Each death makes him stronger. How did you know where he was going next? I opened myself up to him. He might have executed his body, but his spirit has been released. He has the third power. He could be anywhere. How's the stomach, buddy boy? <laughs> Logan! He has the second power. Hi, cutie. He could be anyone. Sister. Oh, I'm afraid she's not here. Now... He has the first power. See you around, buddy boy. Immortality. You don't have any idea of what you'll be facing. (laughs) You can't go on killing forever. You want a bet? All right, guys, that was the trailer for the first power. And that's a it's a neo 1990 horror slasher. This is like right on the cusp of leaving the 80s going into the 90s, which is just a weird twilighty time to me. I don't know why. Yeah, there's a lot of really great shit in 1990. Um, that's kind of bef- that's you're still getting like the, you know, because a lot of that was filmed in the technically the 80s still. So the trend hadn't really shifted yet from 80s cinema to 90s cinema i I don't for me personally i don't think that really happens till like 92 or 93 yeah Uh, more and more of a mass scale i mean there's probably some movies that were a little before that but anyways and for anybody that gives a shit i've been working on a giant list of uh 90s horror films on letterbox well add this to your list sir (laughs) <laughs> it's it's on there. Uh, well, Letterbox you can kind of filter, but then there's a lot of shit in that list that you're like, no, that's just like uh, Scooby Doo meets you know Frankenstein or some shit. You're like, no, you get go. that out of there. There's a bunch of shit that's irrelevant and some stuff that's more like just thrillers. Like there's some random thrillers and shit in there. So I didn't like the way they filtered their horror. So I was like, no, I'm gonna make a better one. And it is my list is the largest user list on Letterbox. So hmm. well, look at you. 
Look at you. Um, all right, guys. So the first power, uh, this is stars Lou Diamond Phillips. Uh, um, uh, Michael T. Williamson, who is also known as Bubba Gump. Or no, just is he Bubba Gump? It's not even Bubba Gump. It's just Bubba from Forrest Gump. Yes. Yeah, um, Bubba Tracy, Gump's the fucking shitty seafood place. Yes, Tracy <laughs> Tracy Griffin, who, by the way, is Melanie Griffith's younger sister. I don't know if you knew that. I did not and, know that. Yes, yes. Jeff Kober. Who's, who's very pretty in this film, though. Oh. Very let's pretty in this film. Talk about how attractive she is. Nice natural redhead, we'll say. Uh, Jeff Kober, who plays her killer. And then, really strange, and I don't know if he caught this. Uh, but Bill Mosley is the bartender. He's the bartender. Yeah, I did catch that. <laughs> yeah, like a two-second like, scene. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, a, a two-second two scene with it's, him. It's a classic old Bill Mosley showing up in a random old fucking film, and you remember he's been acting for fucking ever. <laughs> You're like, can you sign my first power VHS? <laughs> <laughs> what? He would do it, too. He would love Oh, yeah. He would, he would totally do it. Uh, directed by um, – this is directed by uh, Robert Rezenkoff. Does not not known for a whole lot. He's only directed. Uh, he's mo- yeah, he's more of a writer. I think this is the only film he actually directed. Yeah, he wrote this movie too. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, man. So basically, it's 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 a like a serial killer movie. Um, you you it, it starts off like with a bang. Um, Lou Diamond Phillips is the cop. Uh, so basically, Jeff Kober he he plays Patrick Channing. He's he's also known as the Pentagram Killer, and he's at large. He's he's he, they're they're looking for him, and and obviously Lou Diamond Phillips has been on the case. His name's Detective Logan, and he basically sacrifices not Lou Diamond Phillips, but the killer. He he his mo is he carves a pentagram in, into the their chest before he kills him, and Lou Diamond Phillips is the uh, the rough detective hot on yeah, the case. Who, who, yeah, who can't who who you know who can't quite catch him. Yes. And yes. he's also he's like known as the cop that goes after that is after this guy. So like every cop in the force is always like, you know, either on his team or busting balls. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So right. He's, he's sort of. Yeah. But so you 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 have uh, somebody anonymously call him who is obviously uh, Tracy Griffith, Melanie Griffith's sister. Her name's Tess, and she. Um, she says, hey, this is where the killer's going to strike next. You just got to promise me one thing. Don't execute him. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. So they uh, they they do a stakeout, and they successfully track down where Channing's little killing area is, his little killing den, little lair. And um, they catch him because what happens is, is Channing does take one of the cops um, – and that they had as a as a decoy, and he is going to kill her. And and let's let's talk about this. He, he's got a a really spooky old man mask, and he's talking yeah, weird Satan thing. stuff. Yeah, real, real weird Satan things with in this little cave. Looks like a, you know could have been a old zoo, you know, an old zoo and an old bear man made bear cave or something. I don't know. Yeah. But um, anyways, yeah, that mask is cool. And and but anyways, um. They show up to they they find him man and and you know uh, they they fight him and nobody dies but uh, Lou, Lou Diamond Phillips you know he he shanks him a good couple times in the stomach but um you know it's going to trial that's it it's going to trial and and uh, he's happy about it the killer the serial killer he's he's like fuck yeah put me to death you're doing me a favor. And then, you know, the, the, the psychic makes another call and she's like, hey, man, don't fucking kill this guy. It's like, yeah, 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 bitch. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. We're killing we him. We got him. We got him. He's done. Yeah. And they do it. But then it also goes into a weird dream sequence where he does get executed. But like in real, he does. But also it's happening in his dream sequence. And then the guy breaks out of the gas chamber and fucking – goes to attack Lou Diamond Phillips and then he wakes up. So he's got some PTSD shit going on. Yeah. I really like the gas chamber scene because Channing like takes a deep breath. <laughs> he's <Yeah>. just like, <laughs> he's he's like, like, come on, baby, give it to me. Right. And, uh, no you know, fear. yeah. So he, he, uh, basically what it kind of boils down to 
it, it, it alludes to Channing is, res- is, is given the first power by Satan, which is resurrection. And uh, he, uh, so he's able to possess like you know, nearby bodies. Yeah. Or, like, what is it? It's like a, they say he often hops in like homeless people because they're not mentally like. Right. They're not like mentally there enough to really like fight it. So right, it always gravitates towards like homeless people, which I actually love, and I think it works for this movie because there's some really great scenes where this happens. I'm like, oh, this is kind of cool. And what happens is, is like all the people in the detective force are getting offed one by one. Yeah, in the movie, and and what's just kind of weird in particular, a lot of the shit happens in daytime during this movie. You know, like what I which I noticed. You know, like like that. You know, the the the. Taught the cop that was taken for a decoy, the chick, you know, they, they, he finally kills her, right? And her body's found during the day. Yeah. Um, his buddy, uh, Bubba, you know, gets stomped by horses. And all the while, Tessa's hanging out with him because, you know, they're, they go into her house and figure out how does she know this guy? How does she know Patrick? And, you know, she doesn't. She's just a psychic. And, um, so it's kind of a cat and mouse game through the movie as he's 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 jumping into people's bodies. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you know they they kind of get a little bit of a backstory because they go to his mom's house or his grandma's house and we find that he's born of not only is he molested by his grandfather, he was also born of incest and just just strange. A um, lot of lot of big stunts in this movie. A lot of oh stunt. yeah, there's the, I love the uh, the rooftop stunt. I thought was good. There's that whole two, that whole scene was really good. There's like two rooftop stunts in this fucker, dude. Yeah. There's a lot. There's there's a car some car chases. There's horse stompings. <laughs> there's um, you know, there's a lot of weird things. But it but you know Tessa or Tess or whatever her names they kind of like. You know, it, it's like she's hanging out with him throughout the whole movie, and he finally believes her because he's he's a real big skeptic. Yeah, real big skeptic. And uh, well, the, the the one of the particular rooftop scenes actually changes his mind. Yeah, that's yeah. like that's the point where that's why I said that whole scene is actually really great because it's like the it's uh, the detective, Tortessa, detective Russell Logan is like coming to terms like oh fuck something is not normal here. <laughs> right. Right. Something's not, a, something's not normal, but, um, they end up, uh, employing a nun who's in the beginning of the movie, who the nun, a little bit of backstory that the nuns just saying, Hey man, Satan's Satan's here. And they're like, yeah, she, come she's on in the lady. Opening scene, right? Like the first yeah. scene of the movie she's in it. Yeah. And the, and the, the priests and the Cardinals are like, get with the 21st century. N- that this isn't the dark ages anymore. Come on. We don't believe in Satan anymore, you know? So, um, anyways, yeah. So they go to the nun and the nun fucking hooks him up with a, uh, a, a knife crucifix says you got to stab him in the chest or something, but they, they also, um, find where his lair was and it was a water treatment plant that he worked at. And, uh, you know, um, but also, there's a really cool scene where, like, they're getting ready to kind of kiss mm-hmm. in his apartment. And then, like, this this homeless lady, like, floats second floor in yeah. the window. <laughs> I love that scene, too. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. Man. She was – she pl- I thought she played that, like, little – very small role in the film. But I thought she was great. It was just kind of yeah. – it was kind of silly, kind of creepy, and it just, I don't know, it just worked for me. <laughs> yeah, and then, like, she's like, she's all rust, did you? He's like, what are you talking about? Just calm down. And then they, he's turning around, and all of a sudden, she just flies through the window at him and kicks the shit out of him like Bruce Lee, which was really funny. Um, there there was, there was some funny, weird little things in this movie that made me laugh, but, you know, whatever. Stuff like that, you know, like there's some karate stuff going on from the, the homeless lady. But um <laughs> but you know, uh yeah, they they end up uh he possesses the they all the him, the nun, or you know, the nun shows up but she's he's possessing the nun and then they finally fucking have it out, they have a fight and chat Channing gets stabbed in the chest with the crucifix. Yeah, it's like a blessed yeah, the like only this. thing that's going to kill him. And the police officers show up and they wound Logan. 
uh, after he per- almost stabbed the nun. But I feel like there was a cheesy line said by somebody when they showed that crucifix, but I can't remember what it was. Something to the go effect to of hell. It wasn't going. Well, it was hell, like the know. only thing that can kill the first power is the first weapon or something like that. Yeah, something to that know. effect. I can't remember how it was worded, but I was like, oh, it was cheesy. <laughs> yeah, there there was a really cool scene at the end where he dumps him like in an acid pit. And he comes out and like he's looking like he's got half of his fucking face gone. Basically, it looks like kind of a Freddy Kruegerish type of look to it. Yeah, that was pretty cool looking. Oh yeah. And then he had his he had he he had, he, he had his uh. And by the way, Jeff Jeff Cober plays this amazing in this movie. But he's like, hey, he's buddy. great. I want more of him. Hey, things. buddy boy. Yeah. Hey, he's buddy a great boy. killer. He is. He's in um. Man, this guy's been in. A lot of things. He was in obviously The Walking Dead, Sons of Anarchy. Um, he was in China Beach, the TV show. China Beach, yeah, day. he was. CSI, great actor. He was in. Um, oh, good God, he's got 144 credits. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a lot of movies, man. He was in. Uh, he he was in Out of Bounds. With he was played the bad guy in. I don't know if that was an Anthony Michael Hall movie. He was in Alien Nation. Played an alien. Nice. Take Girl. Demo. You know, a lot of movies, man. Not a lot of big movies, though. Yeah, a ton of TV shows. Like, this dude made a living off doing two or three episodes of a TV show, it looks like. Yeah. Yeah. He, Good for he him. Was, yeah, he, he's still still working, but I wish well, we would have seen this guy more because he's great. Yeah, well, his biggest run appears to be on General Hospital for two years, 174 episodes, and that's good money. There, Just, hey, there you have it. My wife yeah. stopped watching uh, Young and the Restless a while ago. Just lost her. <laughs> but uh, I, go ahead. Uh, I also really like the music in this movie, so I yes. looked it up. It's fucking Stuart Copeland, the drummer from The Police. What? He had the music for this. Yes. He did the, the, the music fuck? for it. I had no idea Stuart Copeland did any like uh, music for for movies, but yeah, he did it. Interesting. Right? And then uh, the movie was also actually pretty successful in the theater. Yeah. Uh, had a budget million, about, right? yeah, $22 million. They cost about $10 million to make. So it's a pretty good pull for a movie like this in the theater back then. Yeah. That poster had a uh, pentagram on it in 1990, which was, you know, uh, probably not very – didn't go over very well. So it actually is a pretty damn – Pretty damn good money making back then. And he got he got his ugly face on there too. He looks pretty spooky. <laughs> it's a pretty cool poster, actually. Satan has created the perfect killer, one who I... could not be stopped. Be warned, the first power. <laughs> um, yeah, quite a gem, I'm gonna say. Uh, I agree. Yeah, quite a gem. I I feel like I feel like I saw this in the dollar theaters. In 1990, as a 13 year old, I feel like yeah. I have. So this uh, this was a box that always stood out to me at Blockbuster when I was a kid renting movies, and this fucking movie was never in ever. Oh wow, never in. Uh, so I never watched it, and then I kind of forgot about it. And then when you said let's do it, I was like, I think I I thought I watched it for one of the uh, one of our October challenges. I thought I threw it in there, but I didn't because I didn't remember any of it. So. I'm very glad we decided to do it. Interesting. Um, Susie, uh, Tracy Griffith, um, the one who plays Tess, she actually retired from acting. And uh, she was in uh, some some soaps as well and The First Power. And she was in some 21 Jump Street stuff. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, she she retired from acting. And, and uh, yeah, she um, – She's a uh, sushi <laughs> chef, nice. and she got she got a TV gig uh, in the DIY network. Yeah, so um, well, I guess I'm gonna watch that. Yeah, so she she's uh she actually uh, is a painter and she has her own art gallery and yeah, successful and beautiful by the way. Fuck absolutely, you. absolutely. S- something striking about this girl in this movie. Still. Movement. Like, oh, yeah, she's still great. Yeah, good well, for you. Yes, good for you, Miss Griffith. Um, I'm I'm gonna give this movie a solid four out of five. Um, yeah. some corny stuff, like I'm gonna say, some weird editing stuff, some 
things that bug me a lot about movies is when the stunt man doesn't quite look like the the actors. So you have some of that in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> but um you know, some weird little editing things, but um yeah, man, I I enjoyed the shit out of this movie. Yeah, and, I uh, I don't disagree. I think it's a uh, for me it's a I, I it was kind of at a, in between a three and a four for me there, but after talking about it, I, I I good with a four. That works for me. Uh, what I like about it is it's like has kind of the same vibes as those films in the early two thousands, like you know, like the Bone Collector and mm-hmm. um, what was it? Uh, you know, all those Kiss the Girls and all that stuff like that. It's very much that neat that kind of detective vibe. Uh, but it's just to me. It's pretty damn enjoyable. Like I said, music was great. Uh, Lou Diamond was Lou Diamond, um, you know, and the killer, obviously, which we'd already talked at length with uh, Jeff, was fucking great. Um, so kudos. Yeah, super happy with this one. I would yeah. gladly watch it again and buy that poster. Fuck yeah. I, I want that mask, too. That'd be a good horror mask pickup. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're going to do first power on Android Vision, actually. Nice. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna do that coming up soon. So, we'll, so what's funny is you might you know the homeless lady is basically yeah. is like a younger version of the homeless lady from Home Alone. Yeah, two. is it Home Alone two with the lady with all the pigeons? That's, yeah, she just looks like a younger version of her. <laughs> it's great. You can actually buy the first power poster, sir. There's a couple. There's one of his face, and there's another one of Lou Diamond Phillips holding a gun up against the wall. But yeah, you can buy the first power poster. Oh, it's in stock. I want the, I want the one with Cobra's mug yeah, on it. Seven dollars and fifteen cents, sir. Shoot. Twenty seven. Twenty seven by forty one inches. That's big. Yeah, that's a big. That's that's. Those are the posters they hung up in the lobby of the theater. The, yeah, those are what one sheets is what they are. The, I think the coming soon posters. The ones that when I worked at the movie theater when I was fucking. 16 my first job where we had um lady terminator hung up for two years in there <laughs> nice yeah that that was that was a funny one Here but yeah it. man yeah i i uh i really like this movie guys um i can't recommend this highly enough again a tubi classic go find it on tubi yeah and i yeah and hitcher the dark i think is entertaining too not a bad double feature truthfully they're like no. they're not super close but they they work you get two good killers well the killer in Hitch in the Dark is not as good as the actor as Jeff Corver, but whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know who that bag lady is. I don't know. Very interesting. <laughs> I, I keep on trying to – that bag lady is intriguing to me because she did a lot of karate. <laughs> you know? Well, uh, yeah, I don't know. Oh, don't she's know. she's 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 in a lot of movies. I yeah, I her. saw she was in a movie with Cynthia Ruthrock, so – or Roth, however the hell you say her name. Rothrock. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of karate. Maybe she's just a karate chick. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, she's yeah, she's in a lot of movies. But yeah, man. Um go check these movies out. Um I can't recommend them enough and hopefully we back be back in in a in a few. Yeah, it won't be a month this time, so we'll be good. No, we're gonna pick some fucking fun shit. So yeah. all right guys, uh we'll check you on the flip. Thanks for listening to Cemetery Gates Podcast. Yeah, thanks, fuckers. Good night. You've been listening to the Cemetery Gates podcast featuring Android Virus and Xander Kane. Follow us on Twitter at Android Virus, at Xander underscore Kane, and at Cemetery Gates 66. 